Hello and welcome to Mad About Superheroes Comic Book Spotlight. Today we shine a light on the saga of Crystar, Crystal Warrior number one. The Saga of Crystar, Crystal Warrior is a fantasy-based Marvel comic book series released in 1983. It was associated with a toy line from Remco. The toys preceded the Marvel comic series, but since the toys were released first, many assumed the comic had been a licensed adaptation of the toy line. Though in actuality, Crystar and all its characters in the toy line and comic books were created and owned by Marvel Comics, with the express intent of selling the license to a toy company. I had some of the Crystar action figures when I was a kid, and as an adult had a false memory of a cartoon series. I think my confusion may have stemmed from remembering a bit of the animation featured in the Crystar toy commercials. I really liked the Crystar action figures as a kid, and in the era when toys and cartoons seemed to go hand in hand, an animated series could have been really cool. Unfortunately, I no longer have my childhood Crystar action figures, but I do, however, have my Saga of Crystar the Crystal Warrior comic books. Years ago, the Demon Lord sent his demon armies to conquer the world of Crystillium. The King of Crystillium led the fight against the Demon Lord in the Chaos War, but he was killed during the war. The forces of order then sent the wizard Ogiodi and the Prism Crystal to drive away the Demon Lord's minions and the forces of Chaos. In his defeat, the Demon Lord made the prophecy of Chaos that he would one day send another of his servants to divide the planet against itself and bring ruin to all. After the end of the Chaos War, the wizards Ogiodi and Zardeth visited two princes, the brothers Kristar and Moltar who had to decide whether their people would ally with chaos or order. Crystar chose order and its companion Ogiodi. As Moltar considered chaos, their uncle Feldspar tried to convince him that chaos was evil. Moltar, feeling that his uncle had always favored Crystar, became enraged and fought Crystar, injuring Feldspar in the process. Leaving them for dead, Moltar led his followers to the Mountain of Fire to find the wizard Zardeth, an ally with Chaos. Ogiodi saves Crystar's life by merging him with the Great Prisma Crystal, rendering the prince's body into crystalline form. Similarly, at the Fountain of Fire, Zardeth magically transforms Moltar and his followers with the power of lava. Moltar and his magma men then attempt to conquer the city of Galax. Crystar and his warriors, feeling that flesh and blood would prove ineffective against the transformed armies of Moltar, select an elite group, Koth, Stalax, and Calabar, to be transformed into crystal form like Crystar. Meanwhile, Warbo shoots Zardeth in his left eye with an arrow. Zardeth loses the eye, but is otherwise unfazed by the injury. Zardeth shoots out Warbo's left eye in return, leaving Warbo mortally wounded. Ogiodo used the Prisma Crystal on Warbo as he did on Crystar to save his life. Crystar's betrothed, Lavor, allies herself with Moltar, and her former servant, Ambara, and Crystar begin a romance, while Warbo has secret feelings for Ambora. The saga of Crystar number one was magically written by Mary Jo Duffy, who was a writer for Marvel Comics for many years. Not only did she write the entire run of Crystar, she also wrote several issues of Marvel's Star Wars comic book series. All three issues of Chuck Norris Karate Commandos, and much, much more. Crystar number one was mystically penciled by Brett Levins, who illustrated a few Marvel super specials that were comic adaptations of 80s movies, such as The Dark Crystal, 
Krull, and The Last Starfighter. Levens would go on to provide pencils on a modest run of the 90s revival of Ghost Rider, a personal favorite. The saga of Kristar was canceled after only 11 issues, which is unfortunate because Kristar seemed to be tailor-made to be a hit. It's imaginative, with unique designs, it's set in a sword and sorcery world on par with Conan and Masters of the Universe. Maybe a cartoon series may have helped it be more successful, but alas it was not meant to be. Though Kristar originally seemed to be intended to be in its own continuity outside the Marvel Universe, by issue 3 Doctor Strange made a guest appearance. Then in issue 6 the Uncanny X-Men's Nightcrawler also made a guest appearance. And by the final issue, Canadian superheroes Alpha Flight graced the pages of Kristar. The characters used all made sense story-wise. They don't feel forced in at all. So good on the writer for not going the easy route and forcing in more mainstream popular Marvel characters. Though it wasn't a runaway hit, Kristar certainly stood out on comic stands for sure. The saga of Kristar comic covers are some of the absolute best covers of the early 1980s, on par with science fiction fantasy movie posters of the era. Hard rock singer-songwriter Glenn Danzig repurposed a striking image from the cover of Kristar No. 8, the graphic he used for his self-titled album in 1988. Mother! Revisiting Kristar for this spotlight video was an absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining me, and as always, thanks for letting a geek flag fly with Mad About Superheroes. Mother!